Hello everyone. In this review we will talk about kitchen hoods, what they are and how they differ from each other. In the video we will look at their pros and cons, material options and type of connection, and also, we will try to figure out what you need to know and what to look for when buying a kitchen hood. Type of kitchen hoods. Conventionally, depending on the shape and design solution, hoods can be divided into several types. Almost all types of hoods can be connected both to the ventilation duct for air exhaust and operate in recirculation mode when the air passing through the filters of the hood, already cleaned, is returned back to the room. Visor, the most famous and common option. It is a flat visor, inside of which the motor and filter elements are located. Built-in. This option does not have a side trim and is designed to be built into a kitchen cabinet. Built-in hoods can have a high wide range of characteristics. Dome. The classic version, in fact, it is a built-in hood with an external finish, made in the form of a dome, where the dome can be of various shapes and have a continuation in the form of an air duct going to the ceiling. Inclined. Appeared relatively recently, now this type of hood is very widely represented. Inclined hood. In fact, a new type the principle of which is based on the peripheral suction of air. It has a modern design, the air intake grill of this hood is located at an angle. Island, differs from the previous options in that it is attached to the ceiling, and not to the wall, it can also have control located immediately on both sides. If we consider the pros and cons of the designs of the options listed above, then the following can be noted. Visor. This type of kitchen hoods is probably familiar to everyone, perhaps their main disadvantage is in a slightly outdated design. It should be noted that this type of hood is mainly represented by models with a rather low fan power and, accordingly, low performance. Most often, the hood has a restriction on connecting an air duct with a diameter of up to 120 mm. Also, it is worth considering that hoods of this type are practically not represented by models with a width of more than 60 cm. The advantage of such a hood can be called its low cost. It is also worth noting that in many models of such hoods, the grease filter is not located in an aluminum quick-release frame, but is hidden behind a perforated lattice casing of the hood itself. Accordingly, by removing the aluminum filter mesh from the casing, you can clean it with improvised means and chemicals, or wash it in the dishwasher without fear that the aluminum will become stained or darkened, losing its appearance, as is usually the case with removable frame filters. Again, thanks to this version of the filter device, the mesh can be easily replaced with a new one that is close in size. Built-in hood. The only disadvantage of this type of hood is that it is only suitable for installation in a kitchen cabinet or decorative dome. But, this option has a lot of advantages. Built-in models of hoods are widely represented on the market in a very different price range. You can choose models in width, from the narrowest at 50 cm to the widest 90 cm. There are various options for the type of control, design and power with a diameter of the connected air duct up to 150 mm. Among the built-in models, you can find options with a retractable visor that allows you to almost double the area of the grease filter. The advantage, also, is the ability to hide the air duct leading to ventilation behind the furniture facades. Dome. Probably the biggest disadvantage of the dome hood is that it is installed in plain sight, and therefore, its walls must be periodically cleaned of dust and dirt. Dome hoods, like built-in hoods, are very widely represented in retail. You can choose the option you like for design and power. There is also a choice in width, which can vary from 50 cm to 90 cm. When buying a dome hood, you should pay attention to the material from which it is made. Stainless steel models and simply steel ones, covered with enamel on top, are widely represented. About the materials in the finishing of hoods, their pros and cons, we will talk separately, a little later. Inclined. Relatively recently, inclined hoods with perimeter air intake have appeared on the market. It is certain that such hoods, thanks to their unusual shape and finishes, have quickly become part of the daily life of many homeowners. 
Perhaps many will not agree with me. But I still consider the main disadvantage of such a hood to be its lower efficiency compared to a built-in or dome hood. Let's imagine that heat and fumes are rising from the stove located under the hood, which are characteristic of cooking. The depth of an ordinary domed hood is 48 to 50 centimeters, the standard depth of an inclined 35 and much less often 45 centimeters. Here it is quite obvious that the rising fumes from the stove are almost all intercepted by the horizontal one, and from the inclined one, only a part of the fumes gets into the zone of the ventilation grill. Someone will say that this is exactly what perimeter suction works. Yes, of course it works, but you can compare it yourself with the work of a conventional vacuum cleaner. Let's try, located on the side of the nozzle of the vacuum cleaner, to suck in the smoke coming from the incense stick. The smoke is perfectly sucked up only at a close distance, and by placing the suction pipe at some distance from the going smoke, it can be seen that the smoke is no longer sucked into the vacuum cleaner, and it is worth remembering that the hood is still not a vacuum cleaner. In the dome hood, due to its design, or rather, due to the presence of a dome above the source of smoke, air enters even when the fan is turned off, as if by itself. From which the following conclusions can be drawn, when connected to a working ventilation duct and with the fan turned off, a dome hood will show itself better capable of drawing in more fumes even in a passive state in the absence of a check valve compared to an inclined hood. Now about the advantages of an inclined hood. The first plus of such a hood, I would give for a stylish and modern design. Definitely, this hood looks very stylish and can serve as a decoration for any kitchen. Some manufacturers of inclined hoods have gone even further and have developed a function where, when the hood is turned on, the air intake automatically rises, thereby increasing the air capture area, effectively and usefully. Metal and glass looks beautiful, and there's nothing to say. An inclined hood, compared to a domed or built-in hood, precisely because of its shape, creates a certain lightness and elegance over the stove area. It seems to be there, but it doesn't put pressure on you at all and this is definitely a plus. Island this type of hood is similar in design to a dome hood. The only difference is that such a hood is attached to the ceiling and has a finish on all sides. Also, for such hoods, the location of the control buttons can be on both sides, and some models do not provide for connection to ventilation and can only work in circulation mode. So we got acquainted with the types, or in another way, with the design features of the hoods, but when choosing them, it is important to take into account another number of factors applicable to any of them. Productivity. Power, air extraction into the ventilation duct or circulation. Before purchasing a hood, it is necessary to clarify whether it is possible to connect the hood to the ventilation duct in your house. It happens that there is simply no such possibility, and the hood will have to be connected in circulation mode. In the case of considering connecting the hood to the ventilation system of the room, no matter how much we talk about the performance of the hood itself, the first step is to start from the technical capabilities of the supply and exhaust ventilation of this room. The power of the selected hood depends not only on desire, but also on a number of conditions dictated by the technical capabilities of the supply and exhaust ventilation in the house and the area of kitchen itself. Yes. As stated in the recommendations of the standards, in one hour, the air in the kitchen should be updated at least 10 to 12 times, but this requires conditions. In any store, they will help you calculate the required performance of the hood based on the volume of the kitchen. Where, for example, for a kitchen of 10 square meters with a ceiling height of 2.5 meters, we get a kitchen volume of 25 cubic meters. We multiply 25 by the number of times the air is replaced in the room. This is 12 and do not forget to multiply by the minimum reserve factor of 1.3, and we get the required capacity of 390 cubic meters per hour. But, here we rest on the fact that not every ventilation riser of an apartment building is designed for such a throughput, because for many, it is no more than 350 cubic meters per hour, and even then ideally but in fact even less. 
It turns out that a too powerful hood connected to a small diameter ventilation duct will not be able to work normally in normal mode. Which means that having paid for excess power, you still cannot use it to the fullest. Also, for the normal operation of the hood in the kitchen, it is necessary to provide ventilation to the room. You can read more about the supply ventilation and its importance from my other video, a link to which you will find in the description of this video. Since most hoods can be connected both to the ventilation duct and operate in recirculation mode, you should decide which connection option is possible in your case. An extractor hood connected to a ventilation duct definitely has great advantages compared to working in recirculation mode, since when working with a ventilation duct, all odors and heat are removed from the room, only a grease filter is used here. When the hood is in recirculation mode, the air that has passed through the grease filter, before it returns to the room, needs to be cleaned of smell and burning, for which another carbon filter is used, and this, whatever one may say, is regular additional costs for consumables materials. Noise from the kitchen hood, what affects it? All hoods have their own noise level measured in decibels. A silent hood is a turned off hood, and everything else is a marketing trick. The more powerful the hood, the higher the noise. Also, it is worth paying attention to the factors that strongly affect the noise level during the operation of the hoods. An extractor hood operating in recirculation mode will produce more noise compared to the same one where the air is exhausted into the ventilation duct. Powerful hood, connected to a narrowed ventilation duct. If the cooker hood has a 150 mm outlet, then connecting it to a narrower duct, such as 120 or even worse 100 mm, will cause the motor to overcome increased resistance to push air into the narrow duct. In this connection, the noise from the operating hood increases. Connection to the ventilation duct using an aluminum corrugation. Although almost all sold hoods are equipped with a flexible aluminum corrugation for connection to the ventilation duct, it is better to use special smooth air ducts, and preferably round ones. Thin corrugated aluminum, in addition to collecting dirt on its inner walls, has low noise insulation properties, can create extraneous sounds and unnecessary vibrations during fan operation. A ventilation duct having a large horizontal length and frequent turns. From the ventilation riser to the hood, the distance should be as short as possible. The longer the horizontal section and the more angles and turns, the more difficult the fan will be to work. The width and depth of the kitchen hood depends on the dimensions of the hob. Warm air from the burners, steam and smoke rising up from the hob should get into the hood as much as possible, otherwise it will be of little use. The ceiling in the kitchen will quickly become covered with grease, and odors will get into other rooms. Accordingly, if, for example, you have a wide five-burner gas stove or an electric surface, then the hood must match its width, and if the stove is small, then there is no point in a wide hood, and you can quite easily get by with the simplest option by installing, for example, a standard canopy hood. See also my other video for tips on choosing a gas surface. But, it also happens that the seemingly appropriate width of the hood is not always comparable with its functionality. When choosing a wide hood, it is more correct to pay attention not just to the width of the body or glass itself or to its performance, it is more correct to pay attention to the surface area of the grease filter. Take, for example, a variant of a dome or, for example, an inclined hood that looks like it has a different width with exactly the same size of the grease filter. In such options, the manufacturer compensates for the increased width of the hood body by the width of the glass located on the sides of it, and it is good if the fan power also increases proportionally depending on the width. But, the effectiveness of such an exhaust is still in question, since it is not clear how air will be removed along the edges if the air intake is located only in the middle. And here, it is much more correct to consider the principle, the wider the hood, the larger the suction area, and, accordingly, the wider the grease filter. With narrow models of hoods, everything is clear, they can have one or two grills, the engine is located exactly above them, and there is actually nothing to catch, 
but with wide ones, you still need to pay attention to the fact that the air should be sucked in not only in the middle but also around the edges. In the dome version, this can be checked on a working hood, a sheet of paper should be attracted to the grease filter everywhere, in the middle and along the edges. Also, it is worth noting the option of kitchen hoods, with a grease filter retractable forward. In some models, it is even possible to turn on the hood motor when the visor is extended. Definitely the possibility of increasing the area of the grease filter increases the functionality of the hood. Depending on the model and width of the hood, one, two or three grease aluminum mesh filters can be installed in it. It is more convenient to find a replacement, care for and wash it with a smaller filter. Therefore, it is better to choose a hood with several filters than with one large one. Finishing Material for Kitchen Hood Perhaps the main material from which kitchen hoods are made can be called stainless steel. This material does not absorb dirt, does not corrode, and is easy to clean with the right tools. Often you can find hoods made of ordinary steel and covered with paint on top. Such options are more prone to contamination. Dirt can be absorbed into the paint, and in some cases the paint can lag behind the surface due to exposure to hot air and rising vapors. Increasingly, there are combined options, especially inclined ones. In such models the fan case can be made of both stainless steel and painted steel, while the front part is often made of glass. Glass is definitely easy to clean, but in a situation with black, it will have to be done much more often. Cooker Hood Control Some hoods can be equipped with a remote control. It is difficult to call this a big plus. In fact, here you just have to wipe more often not the control panel on the hood, but the remote control itself, which, by the way, without a special place will also be lost. It is worth noting that at the moment most kitchen hoods are equipped with lighting. The old halogen and simple light bulbs have been replaced by LED lights, they are brighter and last longer. But what exactly I would like to pay attention to is the location of the lamps. On some hoods, the lights are located on the back panel closer to the wall, respectively. Some shine directly on the wall, and on some closer to the front, their light illuminates the center of the stove more evenly. The control can be divided into two types, mechanical with buttons that you need to press and touch. There are no familiar buttons, only a glass panel with luminous icons, switching the kitchen hood modes works with a light touch of your fingers. Here, whoever likes it. Mechanics will cost less when buying and repairing, but it is not always convenient, especially when hands are dirty. Touch technology is of course more expensive. It works clearly, even from wet and greasy hands. Also, from the advantages of touch control, it is worth noting the ease of cleaning, it is enough to wipe the panel with a damp cloth and it is like new again. Also, models with touch controls may have other additional functions. For example, the delayed shutdown function is very convenient. After cooking is completed, while steam is still rising from it, by turning on the shutdown delay, you can leave the kitchen and the hood will work for some more time and then turn off by itself and turn off the backlight. Also, I would advise you to find out the exact dimensions of the aluminum grease filter before buying, and look for analogs on the internet. The presence of analogs will indicate that the filter sizes are standard and it will always be possible to purchase a new one, for example, after unsuccessful washing in unverified chemistry, which often happens to beginners. That's all friends. I hope my information will be useful to you and perhaps help you make the right choice. See you. Don't forget to subscribe. Good luck to everyone and see you again.